Okay, so I just want to share with you how simple it is to put a drop down menu here. So if you go to your design mode right now, you'll see that the name of this file right here is toggle. It has an A tag, A tag is an anchor tag, and it has a class called drop down toggle. So I simply just put the code in there. So as an example, if I click here, if you don't have this set up here, you have to go to view, toolbar style rendering. This has to be turned on. It's a very important step if you're gonna work with Dreamweaver. I wanna have this turned on. So it's view, toolbar style render. Once that's turned on, I can click right here and I can turn that style render off. So this is nothing more than unordered list with a custom dropdown. So if you want to put more drop down in here, you can simply the return key and I could do something. Well, I would probably do something like this. Copy, paste, and let's call that item three. And the return key, paste, and let's make that item four, et cetera, et cetera. Now, the way that you get these sub menus, of course, this is a sub menu of an unordered list. So how do I do that from scratch? So as an example, if you want to make contact, have sub menus. So maybe contact customer service contact business affairs, contact shipping, contact the president, et cetera, et cetera. So if I hit the return key right now, it's gonna make that unordered list. So this is a separate list, separate list, separate list, separate list. If you wanna make it part of contact, very simple way to do this is to come down here and do block quote to the right, or I can hit the tab key. Either way it works, if I put my cursor right here and hit the tab key, it indents that as a sub menu. Now, if I the return key again, and I hit the tab key again, that's a sub of a sub menu. And if the return key again, and I hit the tab key, then I get a sub of a sub of a sub. We're not gonna do that today, but I'm just sharing with you how simple this is to do. I don't have to touch code. I'm simply going to my basic butter right here. So now if I go back to live code and I click here, those are the different choices available to me right here. Now this is all being driven through CSS. So this is simple CSS changes that you can do inside your panel. And I clicked on that photo. That's gonna take us to the Yankee site, which I didn't want to do. So I'm gonna stop that. So again, guys, I just wanna share with you, if you don't have Dreamweaver, you try to do this by yourself without Dreamweaver, you're gonna be dealing with this code. Now the code is not confusing, but why are you using Dreamweaver if you wanna write code? If you wanna write code, save yourself 700 bucks. Don't buy Dreamweaver, get yourself Notepad, which, or text edit, which ships with your operating system for free, and write code. I teach you the simple, simple way how to make sophisticated websites out writing code by hand. This is how simple it is. So in this particular case, I just wanna clarify this again. We took a hero, basic starter page. We went to our simple markup here. We copied and pasted into this document and then we just put in our particulars. So in this particular case, if I select this photo as an example, this is originally the placeholder photo. This is the markup placeholder photo. So as an example, that was this photo right here. Now the simplest way to replace a photo is to simply double click. Double click it navigates you to where you wanna change the file. So as an example, if this is my starter page, I will post this for you to use. You can simply double click here, navigate your where the images are kept and replace with an image. It's really that simple. Double click, replace with an image. Double click, replace with an image, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Now, if you wanna add more images, I'm just gonna revert this to the last saved version. If you wanna put more images in here, the simplest way to do this is to select an entire section right here. So I need to select this entire div item right here. So select from point A to point T, point P, and just copy and paste. Now what happens sometimes, I just wanna share this with you. What happens sometimes with Dreamweaver, if you don't get your cursor in the exact right spot, it's not gonna copy and paste. So for something like this, if you pre-select it first, then go to your code, you'll see that that whole entire section is selected. Therefore, I can just take that entire section and copy and paste it someplace else, okay? So I could just take this copy, come down here to the bottom, hit the return and keep paste, return and keep paste, return and keep paste, et cetera, et cetera. So that's how I can just get more information in here. So I don't have to use 
four images, I can use 50 images. But the cool thing about the markup is I want you to be crystal clear on the fact that the markup has nothing to do with CSS at this point. The markup is just telling the content. Okay, for those of you that are new to this, important to understand, what I'm doing is marking up the content to tell the browser what kind of content this is. As an example, this is div content. This is image content. This is more div content, et cetera, et cetera. This is paragraph content because the content has been marked up. So content could be text, content could be graphics, photos, content could be videos, content could be Swift files, flash files, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So I just want to share that very basic understanding that I'm marking up the content that I'm making rules for the content with CSS. Now, in this particular case, though, the CSS rules under the window menu, CSS styles, I don't have any styles for this. This is simply the markup for this page. The CSS styles are located inside of the final project, which has your CSS bootstrap, your responsive bootstrap, and your minim, minimi, minify JavaScript file. Okay, so in this particular case, I have my style for the actual document itself. How can I tell this is tied to just the document itself? This says style, okay? This information is tied to the actual external file. Now we talked about this before. If you change this information, you can't undo that by hitting Command Z. It can't be done that way. So as an example, just because we can, we're gonna go to this clear fix. I'm gonna double click this clear fix. And I'm gonna select background. Just, I, I wouldn't do this, but I'm gonna share with you a technique. I'm going to click right here and hit apply. Now, what file did that change? Well, it changed this file. But how would I know that if I wasn't selected on that? Okay, over here to the right, this will tell me, asterisk tells you that that file's been modified. So I can command Z right now. I can't do that. I have to physically go to the file itself, either hit command Z or file revert to the last saved version. So again, my objective with these first series of videos, and this is volume three, is to get you very, very comfortable with understanding how it thinks and what it expects from you, to not be overwhelmed by this. This is really, really simple stuff because I'm making it simple for you. So in this particular case, we simply took our starter page markup from the previous document, copied and pasted it right into the document itself, right up in here, and it simply swapped out the images. That's all that needs to be done here because the source code at the bottom contains the image files here. So this down here at the bottom, which is part of this file, is telling you to basically load the JavaScript bootstrap minimized, minified, I should say, JavaScript version. And this is basically telling the carousel to move. So notice that this is called .carousel dot carousel tells you that it's a class file. So the class file is up on the top. So if you were to double click carousel as an example, I'm gonna copy that, I'm gonna find, I'm gonna find inside of this document. So based on these choices, I'm gonna pick current document and I'm gonna find the word carousel. Now, I can technically close this document now in the command G to find again, command G, Macintosh control G for Windows. So this is going to go, every time it sees the word carousel, it's going to highlight the word carousel, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Okay, so this is looking for a class file called carousel, and that's right here. So if I command G this, or control G for Windows, and get to the bottom of this, literally, no pun intended, so I can see that it's talking to this class file called carousel. So this is a simple, document JavaScript function. It's a very simple premise. For those of you that have worked with Flash before, ActionScript, it basically works the same way. Executables go inside the curly braces. So what this is telling it to do is this telling the carousel to move at intervals of 4,000 milliseconds. Now, what does that mean? Well, there's 1,000 milliseconds to a second. So right now, this carousel is rotating every four seconds. To demonstrate that, I'm going to click right here, go to this high mode, I'm going to close this down for a second, I'm going to click. Okay, 1,001, 1,002, 1,003, 
1004, 1001, 1002, 1003, 1004. Hey, let's do this for 20 minutes. <laughs> okay, so now if I go back down to the code here, what I can do is change that. Maybe I want this to have every two and a half minutes. So how would I do that? Well, 1000 milliseconds is a second. So 500 is half a second. So if I change that to 2500, that's going to go to OI view, and this is going to go. Now, notice very important step here, okay? So every two and a half seconds, this is going to play, unless I click. Now, if I click, it's gonna take me to the Yankee website, which I'm not gonna make that mistake three times in a row. Right, now, here's the cool part. Because this is automatically set up with the bootstrap, there's no more to do. It's already set up in the CSS viewport. So if I click here, this is the tablet size, okay? Now, tablet size, we talked about this before, the tablet size basically condenses this collapsible menu right here. So now I have my drop-down menus that are collapsible in my tablet size. If I click here, here's my 480 phone. Notice that the photo got smaller as well. Pretty cool stuff. And if I click here, this is gonna take me my 320 smartphone or iPhone. So this is totally iPhone ready right now. Now I'd probably make some further adjustments to make maybe the heading a little bit smaller or the text a little bit smaller. But using the same exact photo, it resized it using the JavaScript format inside the framework. So this is a very simple way to do this. Have fun, it's really, really this simple. I'm gonna post the files for you. All you have to do is double click and swap it out. It's really that exciting, it's really that enjoyable. Of course, we can come up here, and we can change this to whatever you want, okay? This is just dummy text inside of this. So have fun with this. this is, I'm gonna post all the files needed to create this file from scratch. Now, do yourself a favor, don't work with the original file, just like I do in class, version one, version two, version three. Also make a backup file of these external files, because we talked about this before. So if you go ahead and you make different versions, but you modify the CSS here, it's not gonna make a different version of the CSS. It's gonna be the same version. So what I suggest you do is this. Okay, so don't let the software work you. You should learn how to work the software. So again, if you go to your desktop, so on my desktop here, I'm gonna just trash this file here. So we can duplicate this file by either copying and pasting or command D. Now, once I make a duplicate in Macintosh, control D for Windows, what I typically do is do like a hyphen and I put something like before, as in before today. So today is the third, so I would put before, seven, three, 12. This way, I know I can go back to that file as a backup copy. So what I wanna share with you is don't dig yourself into a hole. If you use these exciting files, in these techniques, getting the hack of version one, version two, version three, backing up your folders, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, that will make you a better user and master of the software. Don't let the software work you. You should be working the software. Talk to you soon. Enjoy the holidays for those of you here in the States. Carpe diem. Have a good day.